Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Team Meeting. We are the 5th of September 2023. Today we have myself, Damien Duportal, Hervé Lemeur, Mark Waite, Stéphane Merle, Bruno Verharten, and Kevin Martins. Okay, so welcome everyone. Let's get started with announcement. First, the weekly release. As far as I can tell, the weekly release 2.422 is out. Uh, war packages and Docker image. Uh, Mark, Kevin, I believe you are, if not already done, on the change log of that release and the last uh, items. Is that correct? Change log has been merged. Uh, I wanted to see if it's visible change log is visible and visible uh doc container verification not yet complete but shouldn't take much to to do the container verification okay thanks so that means one action item for uh, the infra team we can proceed to update the docker jenkins weekly base image and deploy it to infra ci and weekly ci ready to go Ready to use. Okay. Hello, we have a new uh, a new participant who joined us on the IC channel one or two days ago. Um, Hi, on. Um, hello. Yeah. Um, sorry. I'm I'm a bit I'm a bit at loss of words here. But, but, uh, no problem. Hi, I'm pretty new to uh, open source as a whole. But um, yeah, but I feel like I could give some kind of great contribution to Jenkins as a whole. I mean, I used to work with Jenkins in the past and yeah, I'm pretty much uh, uh, grateful for what has caused me to, well, earn a salary anyway. Cool. So um, I've shared, I'm, I'm adding back the link because I don't see. We have collaborative notes uh, for that meeting that you can follow at least on read only. Um, oh, the note have been added on the IRC channel. It's ACMD link. So that gives us the same structure every week when we run the meeting. So mm -hmm. if it's okay for you, we will proceed on the usual step of the meeting so you can see how we tend to proceed. And then we will take some time at the end uh, if you have questions, if you want to discuss some elements that are unclear, and if you have a, a point you want to, to contribute to. Is that okay for you? Yes, um, that is really okay to me. Thanks. Cool. So we were just on the announcement area. So the weekly release is out as every week. Do you have other announcements, folks? I don't either, so let's have a look at the upcoming calendar. So the weekly release 2.423 next week, 12 September 2023, as usual. Nothing special here. Is there something special about that release? No? Cool. Next LTS, of course, I can. I have already forgotten when it will be. 2.414.2, uh, September 20. September 20. So in, okay, so we have some times before thinking about that LTS release. So, well, comma, release candidate tomorrow. Say tomorrow. And Kevin or I are responsible for the change log. Huh, Kevin? <laughs> nice. That's correct. Thanks. Um, do we have a security advisory? I believe one has been tomorrow. announced earlier today. So we will have a plugin security advisory tomorrow. Correct. Um, so September 6, 2023, tomorrow, 
plugins only. So please don't break trusted CI tomorrow. I did it today for that exact reason. Uh, next major event, we have the upcoming DevOps World, where we will have community members present. Is that correct, Mark? That is correct. World so Tour. DevOps World Tour in New York is September 13 and 14. September 13. And then Chicago is, I believe it's September 28th. Cool. So I believe both of these editions will have com one at least one community member present. Correct. I, I take it back. September 27. Cool. And then Santa Clara is the next month, but we can talk about it later. Okay. So if you want to meet some of the community members physically, that's a good opportunity to have some, at least uh, the one based on the US, because I believe none of the uh, poor European here are going. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, no more major events. Nope. Okay, so let's start to review the work we were able to close and finish during the past week. So that's the milestone, which ID is 79. I'm going to proceed on the order of my, of, my, of my screen. Sometimes the order change on the notes, so we will update on the go. Uh, the first one is remove IP restriction on bounds or migrates to VPN. So it's finished. So since uh, 30 minutes, if you need to reach trusted CI Jenkins IO, you absolutely need the SSH bounds uh, gateway, but you also need your VPN access to be enabled and connected. And you need a user account on the VPN, which is allowed to root to trusted CI virtual network. So I believe Stefan, uh, I, Hervé, uh, Tim, and Alex have that access because they are known to be there. Mark, I haven't had the access to your machine because I know you haven't set up the VPN. Correct. But if you need it, that means you need to set up your VPN. Yes, and I, I am, I am way behind in getting my VPN configured. No problem. Now we only have one VPN, so that should be easier. Uh, just a note that required peering networks between each other, and the naming that was used for the original virtual net was creating issues and overlapping. So earlier today, this morning in the in Europe, I had to uh, destroy the, tr the free trusted virtual machines and recreate brand new on the new virtual network. Uh, so that means our confidence and ability to restart this critical part of the infrastructure is good. We can do it in less than 24 hours without losing any data. It's just that uh, it kept the update center index to be updated during two hours. That's That was the external impact. I haven't seen any other problem. I reported what I saw during the bootstrap, uh, minor issues, but at least it's written if someone has to do it in emergency in the upcoming months. Is there any question, things unclear about that task, or can we proceed to the next one? One, two, three. Okay, next one. Stefan, um, virtual machine improve common prompts to avoid confusion between services and controller. Can you just give us a report of what you did and what is the result of that closed issue? I did that much. It stands in the in the puppet the way we uh, provide the prompt, um, and now we have the the variable and the colors. Uh, directly uh, within the prompt. Of course, what I the, the screenshot I did was uh, before the merge, and it's from uh, Vagrant, so we can see only local host. But we should see now that it's merged. I haven't checked since it's merged, but we should see the the correct name, uh, the full name of the controller. Exactly. The goal was to avoid confusion when uh, some 
operational members are on one of the free virtual machines of the free controllers. Just to be sure you don't run a command expecting to run in a trusted CI while you are running it on CI. These are not I, the same instances. I still yeah? need to change the nice to have. The nice to have is not done. Changing the color depending on which controller is not done. OK. It's nice to have, so you can comment back on the issue later. But the most important part is there, what has been requested by the Gen Jenkins security team. Now they have the fully qualified domain name inside the prompt. So now the color, uh, you have to decide the color with Daniel. <laughs> yes. Deciding color is always the most difficult part. The rest is implementation. No, no, I will let him decide and I will put the what he wants. That's fine. Especially okay. since he is colorblind, so it's important uh, for him. Of course, yeah, that would be hard. <laughs> <laughs> if, I think it's really great that Daniel uh, has uh, uh, this particular IT because uh, he's really keen on detail and so he noticed a lot of things about that. Yep, absolutely. That's really a great help. Thanks uh, for the work, Stefan. Uh, still your turn, ATH bill commonly become inresponsive. That was an old issue. And there were one last step. We wanted to run the first try on building an ATH step on a spot virtual machine instance because it's really cheap, 10 times cheaper than the usual instance. And we, want, we wanted to implement something if, if we have to retry because the spot instance is reclaimed by the cloud provider. We want the second run to execute on an on-demand instance to ensure that developer still comes to a result on the end. So we don't want an infrastructure spot-related issue to to be to break the build. Stefan, can you report? Yeah. Is it okay for you? Were you able yes. to? Yes, we 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 uh, even try to kill one, not uh, manually one. Uh, spot instance manually to make sure that the second try will be on the handman one and that worked. So yes, that's working. So we should start to see results when I will do uh, the weekly billing reports on Azure Clouds. So in one or two days, I will report there next week on that result. We should see the result, the direct result of that because we are back to spot instance by default with this. Any question? Things unclear? Cool, thanks for the job here. Um, SSL certificate for CI Jenkins IO was expiring in only 23 days. Thanks, Mark, for raising that issue. It's fixed. I've detailed on the issue the problems. Um, when, migrate, when I migrated CI Jenkins IO to the new virtual machine, in order to bootstrap it without Apache failing, I copy and paste it, the former certificate and Let's Encrypt setup. It appears that when you create a Let's Encrypt certificate using Certbot, it generates what is known an account when connecting on the remote API to differentiate call from different virtual machines. So the new tentative was trying to use a new account with a different set of parameters. And one of the parameters that were required for a successful renewal has been set manually years ago. I tracked it in 2017. But since it was persisted, the renewal always used the same configuration. But that thing was done manually and never put inside configuration as code, hiding it from us. So thanks to that, I was able to understand that issue. I've linked the, the nice article that helped me to understand the problem. And then it was uh, fixed and did the pull request on puppets. So now that one shouldn't be a problem anymore. So the certificate has been renewed. After applying my fix, I didn't renew manually. I let the system do it and it worked. So thanks, Mark. Is there any questions or things unclear on this one? Um, nope. Just one yeah. sure. I mean, um, have you guys ever thought of a way to monitor the SSL expiration before? I think everyone has thought of that already, right? Yes, 
We have mock wait for that right now. That's the reality. <laughs> And and uh, Mark Waite has a has a system that does it. I actually use Check MK, and we've also got Datadog that we will eventually use for it. But right now we haven't implemented it in Datadog yet. Yep. Uh, that that could be a nice first thing. Hervé, uh, can I ask you just to take notes and then we I will write them. Can you take notes on your own? That one could be a nice uh, newbie issue yeah. because but our Datadog I... is managed by Terraform, right? Yes, and there are already SSL uh, checks, I think. Oh. Um, so we might want to look at them before creating new one. So I'm uh, that need to be checked, but I think we need to update them because they are checking if the yeah I remember when we uh, shut CI gen the virtual machine down. Datadog alert us that the certificate is not up to date. I believe it's not checking 30 days before renewal like Mark is doing. So that could be a nice upgrade to the existing monitoring. Does it answer your question? Yes, that does. Cool. So that means we should come with a new issue that could be taken if you're interested soon. Worst case, that will end up in the Oktoberfest. But if you're interested, since you told us that you knew a bit of Datadog, you should be able to start checking our Terraform uh, management repository, which is public. Uh, lovely. Let's I mean, take uh, a note. should we codify that into a uh, an issue or some of some sort? Or yeah. Uh, yes. Yep, abs abs absolutely. If you are willing to write an issue for that, that's perfect. I plan to write it after the meeting uh, and point it to you. But if you are willing to uh, to open one yourself, please go ahead. That will be a great help for us. All right. Thanks. So to improve monitoring. OK. Thanks for this one. Any other question on that task? Nope, cool. Uh, next one, delete the legacy VPN related resources. Uh, so we used to have formal networks um, and these networks were only available through a VPN instance that leave that vpn.jenkins.io domain name. We don't need this network because we have migrated the last remnants two weeks ago. So we removed that costly virtual machine. Yes, that was a hate CPU, 24 gigabyte machine, just for running a single VPN. Because back when it was created, that was the only way to have more than two network interfaces on the same machine. We don't have that constraint anymore and we have migrated networks. So less money to give to Microsoft and more money to spend on bills of the ATH. Any question on this one? Okay. Um, plugin build pipeline stopped working. I believe that was, so there was an error on a contributor CI build on CI Jenkins IO. And the problem was located on the settings XML that we use for Maven, that we use to capture all Maven requests to retrieve dependencies. So these requests are sent to our artifact caching proxy system. And in that case, that was a word, word an exotic Maven behavior to say the least, when you define plugin repositories instead of repository, in order to download Maven plugins instead of other dependencies. So we deployed a fix that, uh, so I provided a short-term fix. So they were able to continue uh, working on the Jenkins plugin. And then as infrastructure, we slightly changed the settings XML deploy. So we don't have that problem. And we proved that rollbacking might change still work. And that allowed us to work on artifactory bandwidth reduction uh, challenge. Um, there is just one little problem with this one. It broke the integration tests of the Maven HPI plugin. Thanks, Mark, for pointing that out during a banking day in the US. 
I see someone <laughs> was behind the computer Monday. <laughs> Hmm. I, but, I, yeah. I reject I reject your attempt to govern what I do on my day off. Thank you very much for trying, though. That's very good. Fair, fair. That's a fair one. I attacked you first. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> so just, I forgot to link. Just let me link the issue. That was Jenkins. Okay. Um, here is the for info we cause this okay um we will keep that setting because it's the only way for us to not depend on apache central and the problem that has been caused is an integration test uh, uh, setup so that one should be easy to uh, no no it won't be easy but it's not a blocker. It's not blocking anything. It's just something to to resolve. Um, is there any question about the, that that problem? So, so just for clarity, oh. you're saying that that really what you learned was that's an it, that was a test failure, and it's a test failure specific to our configuration. Exactly, and we got it. Thank you. The fix that we deploy to close that infrastructure issue here needs to be reported somehow. That's the somehow that I'm not sure and that it's complicated. Inside the settings XML provided to run the integration test of the Maven HPI plugin. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for asking because I might not have been clear and it was clear inside my head, but maybe not here. Um, any question? Can I move on? Okay. Uh, next one, migrate third CI Jenkins IO. So third CI Jenkins IO, which is a private controller used by the Jenkins security team to prepare security advisory in advance, has been migrated to the new private network. That's the reason why we were able to delete legacy VPN. Uh, the virtual machine is now having more resources, is cheaper, and is using more powerful agents, which are also cheaper. So that should be a good thing for everyone. More power, less money. That's perfect. I haven't seen any issue since past uh, six days on this one. The Jenkins security team user all confirmed they can reach and work with the instance. So the issue has been closed. Is there any question or clarification here? Okay. One last thing, we had a password issue that was closed because it wasn't related to an account on our LDAP, but someone didn't give us enough information and it looks like they were trying to use their own Jenkins. Never get the answer from the reporter, so closed as no action required. Is that okay for everyone? No question. So now the next step is let's check the work in progress. And for each of these elements, we will evaluate if we need to continue working on them for the next week on the upcoming milestone. Two topics. Right now to add immediately, which is not covered on the work in progress. Okay, so let's cover our work in progress milestone thing. I'm switching to the open issue. I'm taking them again on the order here on my screen. That might be a slightly different order in the notes. I let you uh, um, map the points. Remove remnant of the legacy virtual networks. Um, in fact, all the overlap network has been deleted. But we also had a whole virtual network that cannot be deleted in Azure. As I reported on the issue, every tentative to delete that network or its subnets and an internal server error from the Azure API. Um, so I try to follow everything from their automated support answer. You know, it's clippy, but for Azure Cloud, uh, which is really good assistant, by the way, way better than clippy. <laughs> 
I, I've been amazed by the links to documentation are very precise with good indications. So that was really useful. But on the end, it, it kept uh, sending me the HTTP 5.0.0 error. So contacted the support. And it looks like they are involving their backend team. They see we have former resources that I can't see on the Azure portal or the API, but they are linked and connected to that network. So they are trying to either uh, surface these hidden resources on the UI so we can delete them properly or remove the whole thing on the back end and we can forget about that network. So I'm not closing this issue until we don't have a feedback from their support yet. Is there any question about that issue? Cool, so I'm, so I'm keeping this one on the, since there is no action required, this one won't be on the next milestone. It will slip somewhere until we have an answer. Okay, for everyone. Next one, top priority, assess artifactory bond with reduction options. So I haven't had time yet to report uh, the result, but um, we are ready for this week to remove definitively the mirroring of the Apache Central and Artifactory. The plan is to do it this Thursday since we have a security advisory tomorrow. The result is that with the settings we mentioned earlier about plugin repository hack in settings XML, I did not see any warning or errors except the integration tests and a warning somewhere on a misconfigured repository. So from infrastructure point of view, I will report everything I tried, jobs in CI Jenkins IO, job in Trusted. Um, I don't see any more blockers on definitively removing Apache Central. That's the summary. I need to write details so it will be checked one last time before Thursday. Uh, but unless there is any objection, I propose we proceed, we announce this. So we should be able to ask Gfrog for a last report for this week, or at least until Thursday. And then we will be able for the next week to see the impact of on the bandwidth download on Artifactory. Is there anything you want to ask on that topic? Because that's uttermost important. Do we need, do we, in terms of informing people, you'd already sent the email to the developer list. That seems like the most crucial thing. Do we need a blog post as well to give us a milestone and in time? And if so, do you want me to write the blog post since you're nearing the end of your day? Do we want to enlist somebody else? Um, are there, um, or, or yeah. no blog post? What, what's your feeling? That's a good idea to add a blog post to mark the milestone and increase the communication layers. I think that should be useful, but yes, I wouldn't say no to some help for writing it. Um, we need to decide the, the operation time Thursday. The operation time should be first an artifactory removing two of the 16 mirrors, the repo one and Maven repo one that we have. Mm -hmm. And second, an operation on each cluster, Kubernetes cluster, to clean up the ACP caches, just to avoid some warnings about repositories and, and changing repository paths. And now when the ACP cache is cleaned, mm -hmm. will that cause a repopulate of the, of the cache so that we'll see an initial heavier load and Absolutely. then we'll back off because we will stop, we will have cached everything again? Absolutely. Okay, great. All right. So so we shouldn't be too dismayed if there is high activity in next week's bandwidth report. Uh, but the following week, we expect no no more requests to co the copy of Central that we're no longer giving, uh, no longer distributing. Absolutely. And there is no easy way to, clean, to keep the same cache because Maven keeps an internal... Uh, tracking of where each artifact comes from and that one is encrypted so changing it means decrypted everything recursively changing and re-encrypting technically it's doable but honestly i prefer increasing the bandwidth one time right and and i am sure that jfrog would agree with that that's no question 
they don't want us to do those kind of terrible, awful things. No. Um, we meet Gfrog later today, Mark. Is that correct? So I propose that that will be the last go, no go. We report to them, and if they say it looks good for them, then we can proceed Thursday. Is there any objection, question, uh, need for clarity on that topic? No objection from me. Cool. So Artifactory, uh, Brownout was success. Let's plan for removing Repo 1. But that will be 7 of September. Is that correct? Of September. Correct. September, Damien to report in details plus plan for and i assume when you when you said that the time of day it's probably healthier for us to have you do that start of your working day so that if there are surprises we don't don't end up keeping you late it doesn't matter i won't be any help resolving things but you and daniel are both good candidates to help resolve things if there's an really an artifactory issue good idea early day Europe working day of European team. Okay, that's a good idea. So that would let us plenty time to roll back if we see issues. All right. Uh, go no go with G Frog later today. Did that capture properly in the notes what we said? Yes. Cool. So almost there. If we are, if it's if GFrog is happy with the outcome in, let's say, two or three weeks, that looks like we will be able to close that topic and proceed safely. That means they won't kick us out of their sponsored managed instance of Artifactory. Because an Artifactory of that size is not a pleasure to work with, especially on a public cloud. <laughs> Next topic, migrate up the Jenkins IO to another cloud. So that topic was, uh, I took some tiny measure last week, but I didn't do much and handed over to Hervé, who is back from holidays since yesterday. Welcome back, Hervé. So Hervé, I let you the pain of reporting on that topic. So you did stuff. <clears throat> <laughs> um... Uh, as I understood, the main uh, thing you've done uh, last week was first to validate that uh, we could uh, add uh, mirror bits, uh, mirror bits, mirror with CR sync uh, server daemon URL. Uh, you uh, you have been able to use the internal service. Uh, the internal uh, Kubernetes service uh, URL. Um, so we don't need the IP and uh, DNS records uh, for this instance, but it can be useful for other mirror we can dis uh, dispatch in different uh, cloud provider like Digital Ocean, Oracle, or else. Uh, and uh, another a uh, big part of the work you've done is uh, to upgrade and fix the sync uh, base image we are using for this service. Um, while working on this, you also noticed and we decide to split the Merovitz charts Elm chart we uh, we were using in three parts with the HTTPD server uh, on one part, the async daemon in another part, and the mirror bits uh, alone in uh, in it uh, in his chart each chart. And uh, I'm I've made this split yesterday, and I'm working today on creating a uh, our own term chart to get this free chart as sub chart uh, as dependencies. So some stuff to do about that. It allows you also to work on the async uh, 
on your side and uh, to plan for the get sync in SIO uh, deployment with it. Um, another development, uh, uh, as we didn't receive any response from Cloudflare, and as it seems to be a bit difficult to contact them about their open source sponsorship program, we might not be able to use Cloudflare yet, and we will uh, fall back on digital ocean for now, I think. As soon as we're uh, putting this service in production. Target digital ocean mirror instead for the initial deployment. You also mentioned the uh the possibility of using OVH, OVH uh, French provider as their bandwidth is free or not expensive or less um, expensive. And we have credits, absolutely. So secondary mirrors that we can add immediately or after migrating everything from the current update center, as you said, we have OVH, so that is a sponsorship to create, to bootstrap. But as you say, the bandwidth, the outbound bandwidth is free. Yeah. Mm. Um, potential but, mirrors, yes? But digital sounds, it's also going well for our relationship with them because it's uh, they asked asked us uh, to try their uh, data service. Uh, I don't know how to say it properly, but it's it uh, can be a good uh, good um, good use for them. So they will gather more feedback, and it will right, be also yeah. another. Uh, opportunity to contact them uh, and discuss with them. Absolutely, report to them to grow and nurture the relationship. Um, yeah, the worst case is uh, that will cost us a bit less than 100 of bucks in the worst case scenario per month, which means once we start using Digital Ocean, we will have six months of available credits given the rate we have today with the current usage of that cloud. So we have six months in front of us to start adding mirrors and spread the bandwidth for update center. So I propose that we still proceed in order to uh, keep the whole VM away from AWS. As Hervé mentioned, we have OVH that could be a secondary. Um, don't forget that digital ocean cluster for us where we should deploy that mirror is in Frankfurt data center. It's in Europe, which means we also have to think about, can we have a US-based mirror so we won't change the latency from for our US user? Today, we are the current update center is only in US East 1. So that's why I propose we could also check with Oracle. It's not mutually exclusive with OVH. The more mirrors we have here, uh, the more distribution and spreading of the cost of the outbound bandwidth we have. In the case of Oracle, um, we don't have a Kubernetes cluster, so we, we, we might need a bit more work because we need a VM. We need a VM and a bit more work, but it will be on the on a US data center. And finally, we could find other uh, sponsor, hoping that Cloudflare uh, answers. But right now, yeah, since we don't have any option from Cloudflare, which provide uh, free outbound bandwidth, and they provide also the ability to create buckets inside the China internal network, we could have covered mirrors on different areas in the world. So I propose that we delay the China part for now and we focus on migrating away from AWS to Azure and for the redirector and DigitalOcean as the primary mirror. 
as we said, we have these secondary potential mirrors, and I propose we do a recap once we have made that change, because it's already quite some work. Is there any objection on that part? One last thing, uh, mainly for you, Hervé, you will have to drive this. It's mandatory that at least two weeks before the effective change of the final update center to the new system, after testing and everything, that we publish at least a blog post and communicate, because that means we will change the public IP use for reach the update center, and that will add a list of public IP where the user will be redirected to. We need to communicate that because a lot of Jenkins users are behind corporate networks where they tend to have firewall that only allow some internet accesses. So if we don't want to have tons of issues open after the migration saying, hey, I can't access the updates.jenkins.io or I can access it, but it redirects me to a blocked IP in timeout. We don't want that kind of issues. And we will have some even with the communication. Trust yeah, me. But we can we, had we can send them to the blog post. So that's the exactly way. they have a viable information. So it's just a note uh, that we will need blog post and to ex to have the list of these IP because in that case we control the mirrors. That's the core of that new system. So we control the public IP mostly. Is that okay for everyone? Yes. Of course, some of these public IP won't be, might change, for instance, a Cloudflare public IP. But in that case, uh, each company will have to select a mirror that works for them, that, will, that won't allow us to balance through the HTTP redirector mirror system, but at least they will have a backend solution. Because it's not for us to control that kind of thing, but still we have to communicate about that change. Thanks, Hervé, for the report and the that was quite complete. Uh, and the walk. Is there anything else to add on that topic or things you want to clarify? One, no, two, three, yeah. Cool. So we can proceed to the next one. Stefan, back to you. Uh, what is the status of the RM64 initiative for the public Gates cluster? I, I uh, managed to uh, close the, the pull request on the shared pipeline library that allow to uh, build on the multi-platform. And I used it for the, the wiki. So now the wiki uh, got a, a, a compatible image in Docker for IRM64 and MD64. And I did migrate it to the, the IRM.pool. So I can uh, start back to migrate uh, services to the ARM.pool. Congratulations. Nice work. Thank you. Uh, is now served with ARM64. Great work on that one. Uh, which means for the upcoming milestone, I only have one request for you about that issue particularly, is now to take a list, an exhaustive list, to see which one will be migrated. On the paper, we should be able to migrate everything, but some might be more complicated or we want to keep on Intel, but you need an exhaustive list so we can know when can we close that issue, what is the definition of done. Is that okay for you, Stefan? Well, yes, of course. That there is an exception. The Matomo Docker image does not need to be on that issue because it's a separated issue and topic to track. Once Matomo is deployed, whether it's ARM or Intel, then we can close the topic. So it's only the, the, the other services running on the public Kates cluster. And that's the scope for you. Good for you? Okay. Yeah. Let's list the remaining services to migrate. Cool, nice work. Thank you.
Is there any question or thing to clarify about that topic? Reminder, the goal here is to decrease the cloud bill and by switching to RM64 for most of our run public services, we can, we can expect 10 to 20% decrease of the bill for these services. Um, okay, just one bottle on the, on the sea. Maybe once we will close that topic, we can start moving some of our controllers, such as Infra CI on IRM64 for additional cost benefits, because Jenkins run on IRM64. Next topic, Matomo. Still you, Stefan? Yes. What's the status um, on Matomo? I just thought it, so I first I renamed it because it's Matomo and not Mamoto. And uh, and I did some cleanup. Uh, most of it was uh, versioning. Uh, it's it's still uh, um, a work in progress. Um, I think it's it should build right now nicely. I just got uh, uh, an issue about the Docker Hub that need to uh, be bootstrapped for that uh, name Matomo. Um, I did also uh, another pull request for uh, um, the release drafter, and, mm -hmm. uh, but it's done. Uh, and right now I'm preparing Azure uh, to be able to have the MySQL flexible server um, on the on the same uh, area than the, the PostgreSQL one. That's not area, but the same model template. I'm, I'm working on that right now. Cool, thanks. Is there any question or need for clarity on this one? Reminder, the goal of Matomo here is for us to have our own uh, website statistics and eventually get away from Google Analytics for this part. We will have our own hosting system based on Matomo. Uh, Gavin, who initiated the Matomo process, have a Matomo instance running since one year and a half in DigitalOcean with statistics on Jenkins IO that looks good. So that's why deploying this one, we can start to have our own stat and then decide what to do. Cool, thanks for the work and reporting. Next okay. issue, JDK21. I see we have the two, uh, the two culprits here for that issue. <laughs> Don't run away, Bruno and Stefan. What's the status on the GDK21 uh, switch to the EA week? Uh, I think it, believe it's weekly. It's built weekly. Yeah, you're right. Uh, most of the work I did was nodding and asking Stefan, please tell me more. <laughs> Stefan, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> That's completely wrong. Um, yes, I, I, I did, in fact, already um, um, set up the, the GDK21, but not on that specific uh, early available version. So um, I did just spend time to explain uh, what and where we, we put stuff. We had a little uh, misunderstanding of, uh, of what was really the... Um, the aim of that pull request because I thought that we would just change the the version and in fact um, what was planned was to use it as if it was the the definitive one and to have only the version in only one place. See it. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did and we are waiting for a review right now. Cool. So almost ready to roll. Yeah this one and we got a draft pull request on the update CLI. I'm not sure Bruno had time to update it, but we are It's that. still, yeah, in draft. But it's draft. I'm yes. waiting for your, yeah. When yours will be merged, we'll be uh, Great. switching to a real pull request. Cool. So that means we will be able to track the GDK21 version like we do currently for the other uh, LTS GDK. Yes, on and we, I think, setup. yep, go ahead. Oh, that's just on the puppet setup right now. And okay. I think we did manage a way to not change too much when it will be the definitive one, but we will see when it comes. 
Yeah, that will be just a bit of string manipulation and the probability that Temerin change the naming convention yet again is high, so don't worry. That might change and you will have to manipulate strings. And that's so okay. fine, we are, we are really good at that now. Exactly. But since yesterday, uh, that new GDK21 is used on CI Jenkins IO and we successfully run Jenkins core builds and ATH runs with that new GDK21 EA. So Ooh. that means we bumped uh, of two weeks compared to the former version. Now we have puppets. And the outcome is that we expect the date CLI to track an open pull request when it detects a new version of the GDK21. So once a week. And that means then we can, um, let's say, uh, propose that successful update CLI tracking system to the official Jenkins Docker images as part of the platform SIG initiative. Cool. So cool, thanks gentlemen for working on that topic. Is there any question need for clarity for that topic? Okay, uh, then Mark and hi, we each have one issue, Linux Foundation status page redirect and for me a Jira administrator login page setup. I believe both of us have nothing to report on these issues because we didn't work on it at all. Is that correct? That is correct. So these two issues will be moved like the others on the next milestone until we find time to work on this. Um, could someone have tried me to the uh, three seven three five? I... This one? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, that that's quite a tricky one. Tricky one? Oh. Yes, no, because it no one, it no one does got it got the other sign. Is it? Uh, Yes, it's an assign, but first, this one requires administrator access to Jira, which only a few people have. And the less people we have, because that Jira instance is managed by the Linux Foundation for us, and it contains a lot of uh, issue tracker, and some are private and really highly sensitive. So the access to that Jira administration is barely closed. Only two persons in that room have access, Mark and Hai. Uh, the goal is only the Jenkins infrastructure officer or boards or security team have access to it. The main challenge described on that issue is that we use our internal LDAP system when user authenticate. We don't use Jira internals. And we cannot use the Jira embedded SSO because Jira manage instance does not manage SSO system with so much users as what we have. So we cannot use Jira cloud license. We need a standalone instance. And finally, that's only a matter of finding the proper setup, but it's only a matter of time to one of the administrator to spend on this one. So it might just be one setting, but the goal is to tell users, hey, go to accounts Jenkins your public website to change your username passwords. Instead of the default login that say, go to Jira whatever slash login, because that one is disabled. Does it make sense? That makes sense. Thanks for proposing help, but for that one, that's not a newbie one due to the access level required here. Uh, anyway, if you know how to change that on the usual Jenkins instance, you can help by guiding us uh, or pointing us to the documentation of Atlassian on that part. But okay. I I don't think your your brain should be wasting its time on such an issue. It's a low, it, let's say, low impact issue. I would prefer your knowledge to be spent on something way more valuable, to be quite honest. But feel free to do it if you want. It's just a, it's your choice. Uh, I think the principle of this river that she works here. I mean, I, I shouldn't touch anything crypto at the moment, especially when I'm I'm pretty new to the whole system. No problem. Yeah, for that one, you need to be elected on the Jenkins board or that Jenkins infrastructure to have access. So no worries. It's not a matter of time of trust. It's a matter of the process on the community, how it works. All right. Um, we have uh, one issue that must be treated, Stefan, on the next milestone. We need to improve the deployment that might need some Elm chart work so that our 
services deployed on the public gates cluster, particularly the RM64 uh, deployed system, needs to have an anti-affinity or some kinds just to be sure that the, the workload is spread between nodes. Because it looks like that the Azure managed Kubernetes scheduler is not really strict for highly available and replicated system. And it tends to pack them first, which means if the virtual machine behind the service has all the replicas and that machine is restarted, we create an outage but there is a way in Kubernetes to push the scheduler to be really strict about that. And it's called anti-affinity. That's something that tells a running pod, a running replica to say, hey, don't schedule on a machine where you already have a replica here. So we need to start with simple services that only have two replicas. And we are unsure that then it leads to two nodes on the node pool with one replica on each. And then we will iterate to the one with three or six replicas, so that Jenkins IO or mirror bits, because we might need to fine tune that kind to avoid having too much nodes which are empty. You we don't, will have you don't to want find six the right nodes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the goal of IRM64 is to decrease the cloud bill, not to increase it by adding more virtual machines, right? <laughs> but yeah. Um, we might have to reconsider some of the replica amount choices, mainly because it was done a few years ago and none of us have controlled that we are not having too much replica. And we have a bunch of metrics in Datadog to help us on deciding. So we will have to look at the consumption and see if maybe we can decrease the amount of replicas for some of these services. Are you up to the challenge, Stefan? I, I was I was not because your your face was uh, elected on that issue. So as it uh, assigned to you, I was like, okay, it's his it's team is okay. But if you if you need some help, I can I can rub it up with you whenever you want. That's my proposal. Is it okay for you if I drive and you rub it up with me? In a with pleasure. Window? You miss me, I know, I know. Okay. Absolutely, with pleasure. <laughs> Any question on that? Topic. Uh, do you want to to deal with that before I make too much migration on IRM, or or it's fine? Good question. I propose because that we yet, need to we do, do that do again. Before. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That will be safer. Okay. Tomorrow we will have a security release. Plenty of time to work on this <laughs> and break stuff. Yes. Yeah, but here we don't care. It's unrelated yep. to the security release. And finally, we had an issue. So thanks, Eric. Can you give us a report? Because I saw you proposed the solution that looks good. So um, the build on the, uh, the Gradle builds on this plugin uh, failing on pull requests, apparently. Uh, I haven't noticed that on the master branch. But I've proposed a fix by removing the clean Gradle task as uh, ci.jenkins.io is using ephemeral agents. So there is no need for cleaning the workspace when building a plugin on ci.jenkins.io. I've proposed a pull request on the plugin. I'm waiting for Denis' feedback if it's an acceptable workaround fix or if. There is more to do. Uh, as a warning, I'm like Damien, I'm almost uh, know nothing about it. But yeah. Well, and Gradle is very low use in the Jenkins development community, right? There are maybe 10, 20 plugins that use it, nothing in core that uses it. So yeah, it's, it's uncommon. And I couldn't tap. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. No, no. <laughs> it works. We want to cheat. It works. Yep. It will. But thanks for helping that uh, contributor. That's really helpful. Okay. Um...
Is that okay for that topic in work in progress? Okay, so uh, I believe we have a few new topics, but not that much. I have one that needs an issue to be created, which I will do right after this meeting. We received on the team calendar um, an alert that in two weeks, the VPN CRL will expire. So we will need to renew the CRL uh, for six months, like we do every six months. So VPN CRL to renew before, I think it's the 20. Uh, we had past issues, the process, anyone here can do the process, uh, uh, anyone here with administrative right on Docker Open VPN. Uh, sorry for uh, Kevin, Bruno and our new contributors, but yeah, that's an easy one. Uh, it's the outcome is um, a new doc a pull request once more generate a new docker open vpn image that we have to deploy in puppet update cli uh, is doing most of the ev lifting here once generated uh, and also created a calendar alert in six months for the next expiration that's the most difficult part of that task so an issue will be created. Anyone interested can take it. Otherwise, I will uh, I will point fingers at someone randomly, and they will be designated volunteer to take it in two weeks. <laughs> uh, I also saw, and I need help from people knowledgeable on email, but I had a notification. It looks like some emails, again, are failing the SPF as per uh, team commands. So I will, I'm will. i adding that issue on the upcoming milestone and I will need uh, help because my knowledge on email and SPF and stuff is close to zero, even negative. Do, so I need help. SPF? Uh, that's the title of the issue, that's all. Okay. I don't know what the problem is, if it's really a problem. Uh, I don't know anything on that area, so I need help from people knowledgeable here. Okay. Looks like you are uh, self-designating, right, Stefan? <laughs> yeah. I will add the issue and assign anyone can take it. I don't mind. Let's look at the new issue that we might have received with Triage. Um, we have Nexus Jenkins plugin bundles proprietary dependency. That's an issue opened by Daniel as a top level issue, no action expected from us, but uh, just for, so that you know, the goal is to suspend distribution of that Jenkins plugin because of um, a license thing. Uh, no action expected from us, except keeping trusted.ci.jenkins.io up and working because it's required to update the center. So I will add that issue on the milestone, but no one need to be on that one. I believe, Mark, you have been pinged, so I will attribute okay. the issue to you. I, as I a have board been member. pinged, and I replied in the update center pull request, and it has been merged. Oh, cool. Yeah, so in that... fact, you can see it on your screen. Suspend distribution right above oh, Daniel's yeah, it's comment, merged. and it's merged. So, so it, and. This is consistent with our other policies. When we when we detect that a plugin is delivering proprietary, um, non open source content, we we per our standards remove it from distribution. We did that with the Team Foundation server. We've done that with yep. several. We did it with several uh, from various vendors. Usually, it's just they made a mistake, and all they need to do is go correct their mistake and switch to using open source components. So again, no action, it's more for information. And that issue should be closed once the plugin Jenkins IO won't serve anymore the problem, the, the problematic plugin. Uh, so I'm looking at new issue. We have a GitHub permission, but that's by Jerome. It's not inside the infrastructure, so no need to add it to the milestone. Uh, and PKG origin Jenkins IO is waiting for the work on updates Jenkins IO. Mm -hmm. Which means uh, the last big one is Kubernetes 1.26 upgrades. Um, 
because DigitalOcean will stop supporting 1.25 in October 2023. So in September, we must update, I think the last day is 27. We have September and October. So my proposal is for now to keep that one uh, on the, um, uh, not on the priorities. We focus on update center and IRM64. And end of September, we will again check the status and see if we have to work on it end of September. Is that okay for everyone in terms of planning? Because I want uh, Hervé and Stefan to focus on their top level priority. Uh, I might travel a bit middle of September and I want to be to focus on Artifactory uh, until it's finished and the cloud billing, which require the three of us working all together. So that one should be delayed end of month, unless there is an objection or something I missed. Okay, there is another reason which might help you to be convinced. We don't want to start upgrading Kubernetes 1.26 until we have fixed the anti-affinity highly availability problem of the pods. Otherwise, upgrading the node pool to the new Kubernetes will break services which we don't want. And that upgrade will be a great proof that now we don't have that problem anymore. Sounds good? Okay. So do you have new topics or can we uh, discuss and greet our new con contributor and ask questions? No new topics? Okay. So time for question before we close the recording and the meeting. Okay, so hi, I am pronouncing your 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 name correctly. Hi, is that correct? Yeah, it is more friendly. But you cool. already say hi to me already. So I'm starting brainstorming about the new biz issue. Uh, that's a good opportunity for us to start thinking about the Oktoberfest. We will need to think about uh, easy issues, which can be challenging on the infrastructure because of sometimes the required accesses. And the fact that we are, we might not always have the time to monitor and follow the person who propose a pull request, because yeah. you know the netiquette, as the French says, opening a pull request out of the while on a, a given open source project can be really costly in terms of time, context switching for the maintainer, reviewer, and contributors. So most of the time, it's a better way to start discussing an opening issue explaining, oh, you might want to solve the problem before sending pull requests. That's why I have uh, proposed to Hai to join us today because he's willing to help the Jenkins infrastructure or maybe the Jenkins project in general. That's up to you, Hai. But here for the infrastructure, um, that means we all have to brainstorm and propose some issues that you could work on. Um, I I haven't had the time yet to think about that. So I propose, if it's okay for everyone, that if you see anything that I could take on the issues, um, an update CLI, adding a dependency somewhere, we can start yeah. writing this issue on the milestone so I could start get working on one. And we that means we need to give him clear scope on what is expected to not let him alone. Yeah, Mark got tens of them. I see. Uh, no, I don't have tens, but I have one. And and the one I have is actually an action item from the board that has been piled on Kevin Martin's back. So we have, and and hi, I assume that you may in fact be native speaker of one of the Oriental languages, either Japanese, Chinese, Korean. I mean, um, I would be really... Uh be proud of myself if I could actually speak Chinese or Korean, but I can only speak Vietnamese. So okay, Vietnamese. That all the all the same. That's great. So the reason the reason I, I ask is is we've got we've got an, a documentation site for Chinese that needs to be retired. Oh true. we need it redirected to the English site. No, 
And so there's a there's a learn about the infrastructure to figure out how is how is the current thing hosted, what where is the point where that redirect needs to be inserted, and what are the what are the alternatives for doing the redirection? Because what what the problem we had is we get we had a very active Chinese community several years ago that did a bunch of translations, but they've gone inactive and they've not been active for two plus years. And our documentation has evolved since then in very important ways so that now the installation instructions, for instance, that are translated to Chinese are simply wrong. And so we need that better to point them to correct English documentation than completely wrong Chinese documentation. So what we need is a redirect. And, and but the challenge is where does that redirect go? And and the the parts and the pieces of the system that that you need to find to do the redirect are probably more complicated than than it sounds like it's just a simple redirect. Some web server somewhere needs a redirect. So Damien, are you are you open to that or am I already asking for something that a new contributor cannot possibly do? Uh, you might need guidance, at least some entry point, if you are interested, of course, um, to the, let's say, the Kubernetes resources, which are public, that we use for serving the website, at least on the backends. But that also require analysis on the Fastly port because I don't remember if Fastly is caching the Chinese website. I believe not because Fastly is not projected inside the China network, but that need to be checked. Right. So, so the one of the complications then I like the way you describe one of the complications is some portions of the Jenkins websites are are delivered by a content delivery network that is donated by Fastly. Can we expunge them or? Uh, there... I, I don't think we need to expunge them, simply redirect so that so that instead of going to the Chinese URL, it goes to the root URL. So hmm. instead of x Jenkins.io slash CZH slash ABC, it would go to slash ABC, that kind of thing. So I'm adding um, redirect or redirections and a sprinkling of Chinese here, I suppose. Uh, well, yeah, you you given my non-existent Chinese, yes, you'd have to have at least my non-existent Chinese skills, and that meaning you'd need to be able to run Google Translate if you need to figure out what a page might be saying. Sounds like Gen AI would work there. Yeah, there you go. And another technique. Translate.google.com is my friend on those kind of things. All right. So, so um, that's a proposal. You have the right to say no. It's only right. a proposal. And, that's really and important. And it's just one of potentially many ideas. That's that just happens to be an idea that's on my list. Yep, and Damien cited update CLI. Uh, did you ever try update CLI? Hi. Oh yes, in the past. I mean, I have to re. Uh, I've done plenty of redirections of my old company's uh, domain to the new one. So that that uh, that would qualify qualify me as well, right? Cool. Mm. However, I believe that. Bruno was asking a different question. Hi, he was on a different topic that he just he just asked. It, this redirect oh, sounds I like it's made us yes. Made something? Well, so the redirect is a very different thing. What Bruno was changing redirect is it sounds like you're very qualified. Update CLI is a tool that we use to maintain to automate the updates of versions that are specified in our source files. For instance, Node.js releases a new version and our configuration as code definitions need to be updated to use that new version. Yeah, so, so, so this is what update CLI is. And I'm assuming you probably haven't seen this before because it's a relatively new tool. Yep. 
Uh, my predecessor who wrote this uh, tool and now is working at Use and is growing the usage of that tool. That tool has been adopted since then by a Ski Doctor project, by the um, K3S project on Use and some internal Use project as well. Um, we are using it because we run the update process compared to Renovabot or Dependabot. It's not a cloud or an external system. We run it inside our own instances. But since it's a relatively new tool, um, configuration is a bit verbose and sometimes the UX might be a bit weird because it's it's new and needs users to give feedbacks and contributions. <laughs> yes. Um, yes indeed. So, uh, Damien, uh, do yep. you have any idea of what could be updated with Update TLI which hasn't been updated yet? What is not tracked? Is there um, dependency, an obvious dependency that we would need to update with update TLI. No. no, you already fixed all the obvious ones. So I need time to search and look, but that means the whole team need to search. If you see obvious dependencies that are not tracked, um, that could be a way to at least track them with issues and propose to high by default. And if high, you're not interested any way that's useful because we could label these issues as newbies for at least the Oktoberfest. And, and we need to be careful because sometimes that sounds easy and, and, and just a track in the manifest. And at the end, it's it's just a nightmare. Like the last discussion we had, uh, I forgot when, yesterday, two, two days ago, about uh, the fact that we need the same version of a tool between CI and uh, Infra mm. that start to be not so easy. And About... Mark, you cited um, Node which may be the most complicated thing to update because you don't know what kind of kind of worms you're opening when upgrading a node. <laughs> um, do you have, do, do you have, a, uh, sorry, Damien. Yeah, go uh, ahead. Hey, do, do you have any, any specific uh, um, competence? I mean, do you know Terraform uh, or do you know Packer? Do you know what kind of, of uh, technology do you already know for us to to drive you in in a way that you already knows a little, at least. You, you are addressing me, Stefan? Yes. Hey, okay. yeah, sorry. Um. Yes, I've worked with Packer before. Um. Terraform, Verbas, so, um. Ansible, so on. And I feel like I've skimmed through almost most of the well, uh, DevOps stack nowadays. Cool. So awesome. So we, we can fire everywhere. Awesome. So so another candidate idea, possibly, um, not so much infrastructure as development, but needs the skills that Hai just mentioned. Um, add Debian 12 support to, oh dear, I forget which one it is. Is it the agents? Is it the Oh no, add Debian 12 support to the packaging tests. Mm. Okay. So we have we have a, a test kit that uses Ansible to and Molecule to execute automated tests of our installers. And those automated tests of the installers have to have an operating system on which they execute, and thus Ansible configures that. Yes, this packaging repository is the thing. So hi, if you're interested, it's this isn't strictly an infrastructure thing. It's rather a testing that the it, we use this to test that we are successful in our desire to keep our installers regularly running. Actually, that is kind of within my um, interest, uh, my spectrum of interest. Yeah. Okay, so so this like so so this one is one. If you if Damien, if you look at the list of pull requests, there is a pending pull request. Add Debian twelve. Oh, and now it's passing. I had not seen not seen this one even pass. So so this one is is already a beginning for consideration, but there are some problems hiding in it not hiding there are problems stated very clearly in it and if you're willing to learn about molecule this tool that we use to uh, molecule is a an open source thing that we use to to build and uh, run these tests that would be great um 
another for your consideration. Uh, I feel no, I said, yep. uh, for me on this one. Sorry, go ahead. No, no problem. Sorry. Um, so on my side, I will think about, I don't have uh, some immediate. I have some in the back of my mind, but I want to check them to see what will be required for you to get started. So if it's okay, I will come back with issues next week during the upcoming team uh, meeting. It's not mandatory that you attend every week. If you want, you are welcome. It's open to everyone, as we say it. But I don't want you to feel any pressure. If you start a subject and are not able to land it, that's not a problem. You are here by, because you will and you want to spend some time on this. But there is no criteria of, oh, yeah, we will trust him only if he succeeds. No, no pressure on that part. You are free. It's your time. You do whatever you, whatever you want. So if you help, that's really cool and useful. If you cannot finish, that's not a problem. You will have learned something on the, here. And the process is already valuable for us. Just thinking about what we can share with you is already a good thing for the project, for helping us triaging and onboarding new people. So in any case, it's not a waste of time for no one. So don't feel no pressure, no anxiety on that. And do not hesitate to ask for help or information. And I feel like it's a good buy over here. So you have a, f a, a, a few entry points here. We let you uh, read these elements, try um, to understand yeah. and select one. No problem. Take the time you need uh, and let us know in the channel or by adding a comment on one of the issues with your GitHub handle. Um, just one short answer. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm trying to click on the links that you've sent. Oh, never mind. It works now. Um, the 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 hackmd.io link before. I mean, it's stuck at the human verification. Um, yeah, but it goes through now. Okay, Maybe cool. It's like me with a bot or something. Uh, initially. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. So we use that tool only for collaborative notes, but then these notes are publicated in GitHub Jenkins and Fra documentation and on the community forum at community.jenkins.io every week. So that link will disappear in a few days. It's only a temporary tool until we publish the notes. Okay. Thanks. So is that okay for you? You take the time you need to watch the topic uh, and you can get started on the one that interests you. Uh, yeah. And we will report with eventually new issues next week, whether you are there or not. Uh, we will just report if you choose a topic and then we will also continue working on selecting issues with the October Fest in mind. Thanks, Kevin. Um, just one short thing. Mm -hmm. um... Yes. Uh, I was sorry. I I think I forgot what I I was about to uh to, to what I was about to ask. But uh, no problem. You can you can ask on the uh, asynchronously on the oh, text right. channel. Oh, I, I remember. I mean, um, I assume that I would need some guys up if I want to work on one of the items right here. Uh, bullet points right here. I would need to to ask for some sort of access first, right, to to the infrastructure. Not at no. all. You don't need. Most of the code is public, and the 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 most important part is that we need to select issue that you can reproduce partially or totally, and then you can once you have started the discussion on I want to solve that problem and I'm going on that direction. You can then proceed on opening a pull request if it looks like a solution. And we most of the time we have CI feedbacks that you can see publicly. So everything being public, you can get started. The goal is not having to create accesses to any kind uh, at any moment. If we see that for whatever reason that we forgot, we discover who you might need, then we will discuss this all together, including you. But right now you don't need any kind of access except eventually a GitHub account so we can interact inside the issues where you will propose an open pull request. Yes, I do have one there. 
And in, uh, in, in okay. repo, you got a readme file. And most of the time in the readme file, you can find uh, information on how to proceed on your machine to test your pull request beforehand and even before opening the pull request. Most, most of the time of, you can. Sorry? Most of them, uh, most, most of, of these read, readme are good first issue too, since they are most of the time old and they, uh, uh, they need this update. So if you're reading a uh, readme and you see incoherence, so, uh, problems or uh, uh, outdated link, don't hesitate to edit them. It would be great. All right, thanks, Harv. And it also help us to know what is not explained, uh, what is not uh, correctly explained for newcomers or someone discovering uh, the, the specific repository. All right, got that. Thanks. All right, I think I'm good on my hands now. Cool. I think that's all. I've stopped the screen share. Do you have any one last uh, item you want to to mention or we can close the meeting? One, two, three. Okay. So see you next week, everyone. I'm stopping recording and have a nice day. Bye-bye.